Tunic might be one of my favorite games I play all year. When I said in my last video that this is the best Zelda game on the Switch, I meant it. I think I enjoyed this one more than Breath of the Wild, though it's completely unfair to compare the two. I should be comparing it more to the Link's Awakening remake with their similar art styles and gameplay, but this game is more in common with Dark Souls and Outer Wilds than any Zelda game. The thing that makes Tunic special and makes it its own game outside of those others is probably also one of the most nostalgic things to be put in gaming, depending on your age and probably not something people were expecting to see out of this funny fox adventure game. Remember these? It's an instruction manual. Just around the same page, Tunic plays like an isometric action-adventure game. Eventually you get a sword and a shield and you go around adventuring. There are enemies to kill and secrets to uncover, different tools and weapons to equip, as well as some boss battles. You've played these before. It definitely reminds me of waking up early and playing through Link to the Past back in the day. Or even a little bit of Sly Cooper because haha, funny animal people, am I right? So in my previous video, I talk about having a gameplay mechanic outside of a game and why that's interesting. Tunic tries to emulate that by adding another layer to the conversation. As I said in the intro, we're talking about its instruction manual. The in-game instruction manual. It's special and not something I thought would be a way to tutorialize someone playing the game. It took me a while to realize that's essentially what it is, or at least it fills that role. I mean, it's the instruction manual after all, you'd expect it to give you a bit of a tutorial, to teach you its game. That's pretty normal. However, it's a little more than that, and Tunic doesn't work without it. You get these pages out of order, so you start off thinking, well, that's strange. One page might be text you can't read except maybe a few words, or maybe a page with a familiar control scheme, or maybe just a map. You're not making leaps and bounds here, but you're being that kid with their shiny new game, looking over every page of the manual as if it contained every little secret. Unlike real game manuals though, this booklet does have all the secrets. From start to finish, this manual will be the only way you progress in Tunic. In fact, it's not possible to finish the game without it. If they had decided to put all the hints and story bits in the game as text boxes or characters talking to you, I don't think it would have been as effective. At that point, the game would be giving you all the answers. If I showed you this page and asked you how to run in the game, you definitely can figure it out with ease, but that's the thing, you figured it out. Nothing is ever explicitly told to you, and you might even need other pages you haven't collected yet to understand something on a page you have collected. It leads to experimenting as you play or constantly checking to see if you can understand the booklet a bit better. What does this page mean? Or let's take a look at the beginning of the game when you only have one page and you don't even know where to go. Do you need a character to tell you, go here, or can you just read? The minor differences between inferring information like this and having someone just tell you the answer is really the core of why Tunic works so well. The eureka moments and puzzles that you didn't even know were a puzzle are so satisfying and when you learn something new, it sticks with you because you discovered it. It's your adventure. And don't even think it stays as easy as figuring out your run button. There might be mechanics you don't learn for hours that you start the game with. But this is all in service of the running, exploring, fighting, dodging, shopping? as well as blocking and all sorts of other mechanics that you're used to. It only helps to make that gameplay better. If that sounds interesting to you at all, this is a game you should play. Though anytime I hear about someone complaining about the game being too challenging, that they're forgetting something, or that they miss something, it seems to always be followed up with the notion of not paying enough attention to the pages you collect in the game. The margins have secrets that lead to more secrets that make the game's challenges easier, rewarding, and so fun, though expect to get your butt kicked a few times. It's one of the most memorable and unique games I've played. I mean, look at some of these pages. You don't really get what some of them mean, but I do. This door is one of the hardest and most rewarding challenges in the game. It probably took me around an hour to figure it out and finish it the first time I played, and that's me solving it. And I was just standing there. So I hope that makes you feel a tiny bit interested, because the game tries very hard to get you curious and ready for discovery. It falls under that category of, I wish I could erase my memory so I could pick up that first page and have that adventure again. When you know all the secrets, you can run through the game with ease. Though I can tell you that even after getting all the pages in the book, you certainly aren't close to finding the true secrets in Tunic. That door puzzle that took me an hour isn't even the hardest puzzle to find in the game. 
No, that would be... So my favorite Zelda game isn't a Zelda game at all. It's Tunic and it's cute little fox and instruction manual. And that's a good thing. I had so much fun making this video. Thank you all for watching. You definitely should take some time to find some of those secrets at the end of the game. It's well worth it. I also just want to say to Lifeformed and Janice that I've been listening to your album about once a week now for the past few months because it's incredible. I want to give a special thank you to my buddy Doodle who helped me get some of the worlds and assets into VR so I can use them for this video. Thank you so much. The next video is on a sequel that's not actually a sequel. We need to talk about it. <laughs>